Hi, I want to teach you how to calculate delta G right here using free energies of formation. These come from tables, really nice thermodynamic tables, and we have lots and lots um, of these uh, compounds in tables. So all you have to do is Google it. If you have a textbook, it will be in the back of your textbook in one of the appendices. So before we begin, let me give you some things to keep in your mind to help you uh, with the details so that you don't make small mistakes. Uh, first of all, you're going to use a free energy table, and that's just a table that has the delta G as standard conditions for formation. Um, formation, you'll recall, means forming a compound from elements. Um, and the value that you get in those tables is actually the energy that's available to do work or the energy that's absorbed that's required when you form that compound from its elements. Um, let me give you an example. I'm going to just take this methane. Um, methane, we'd have carbon plus hydrogen gas forms methane right here. Um, now let's go ahead and balance this. And something important on this, you always balance it so that you have one mole of the product. Um, so I'm going to have one carbon and then I have to have two of the hydrogen gas to form this methane. So the delta G at standard conditions for formation is negative 50.8. Now if I were to look up on a table methane, here it is right here, there's methane gas, all it says is negative 50.8. It's understood that that number means, hey, this is actually a chemical reaction, elements combining to form that uh, product right there. So that's where these numbers come from. And that's something that um, a professor or a question, a test writer would expect you to know this foundation. That number comes from an equation, elements forming that compound. So this uh, would be product vapors, spontaneous energy available to do work since, it, since it's negative. Um, okay, this little knot right there. So we have change in Gibbs free energy formation that not indicate standard conditions. And for thermodynamics, standard conditions are 25 degrees C and 1 atm. Um, this is important. It's similar to delta H. Uh, delta G for any element is zero. I want to point that out. So I have two examples here. Look at this example down here. I have two moles of oxygen. Oxygen's an element, and so that is zero. And the reason why it's zero is that elements aren't formed on planet Earth. Elements are formed in the stars using uh, fusion. Oh, excuse me, using fission. Using fission. Um, so delta G for any element is zero. Now this is how you'll see it on a test. You'll be given all of these delta G values. You'll write your chemical equation, and guess what? They won't give you the delta G value for the elements because they expect you to know that it's zero. So have that memorized. Delta H and delta G for any element is always zero. So an element in elemental form is what I should say. Element in elemental form um, at 25 degrees C. So oxygen at 25 degrees C is a gas, it's going to be zero. Uh, the unit on delta G is kilojoules per mole. Be really, really careful. This is a common mistake. I have graded, oh my goodness, tens of thousands, <laughs> literally tens of thousands of uh, FRQs. And big mistake that students make is that they forget to multiply by moles. Notice I put kilojoule per mole. All of these numbers that I put up here, I got from a table, from a thermodynamic table. Notice the unit, kilojoule per mole. This is the free energy for one mole of calcium carbonate, free energy for one mole of methane. So if in a chemical equation, like right here on that water, that two, well, this number is for one mole of water. So you've got to multiply by the moles. It's written, embedded in our equation, but I can't tell you how many times students forget that. So multiply by moles because the unit on the table is per one mole. All right. Um, this subscript right here, just wanted to remind you that that indicates formation. That's going to be the formation. What I have written here, elements forming the compound. Um, so notice up here, I put calculate delta G from free energies of formation. And that's from your thermodynamic table. Um, energy available to do work required um, when you form a compound from its elements. Last thing, watch phases. Watch phases. Um, so I could look up, for example, uh, carbon dioxide as a gas or a liquid. I could look up water as a gas or a liquid. Another, another common mistake, when students are looking at tables, they'll accidentally grab the wrong phase. So be really careful. 
Look at phases, look at phases. Okay, so that sets us up. Here's our equation. This is going to be the change for free energy. So um, here's our delta G. Notice subscript R indicating reaction. So I'm looking at a whole chemical reaction and I wanna know for that whole reaction, what is the delta G value? What is Gibbs free energy? And it's going to be um, sigma, so summation of N, remember that stands for moles, times uh, the free energy of formation for products minus the summation of moles times the free energy of reactants. So here it is, it's going to be products minus reactants. And we just have to add these all up. Be really careful that we include the moles. So in this first one, I'm going to write out our chemical equation symbolically so you can see explicitly how to do this. And then I have a second problem for you, second example. We'll do it just a little bit faster. I'll show you how I do it. Once you understand the principle, you don't have to write it out symbolically. But let's begin so you can see it explicitly. Um, so we will start with Delta G for the reaction. The total, I want to look, I want to find the delta G for this whole reaction. That's what we're looking for right here. So it's going to be products. So I look at my products. I've got one mole times the free energy of formation of calcium oxide. Plus, because this is summation, I have to add the other product to it. One mole. So I've got one mole right there times Gibbs free energy of formation of CO2. So we have just added up all the products. Minus, so great big fat minus sign, minus reactants. So for our reactants, we're going to have one mole times gives free energy of formation of calcium carbonate. Okay, now all we have to do is plug in the numbers that we got from the table. And I already looked up the, the uh, values for you. So delta G for the reaction equals one times, let's see, there it is, negative 603.42 plus one times our um, carbon dioxide, negative 394.36 minus, a minus, um, actually, do you know, let's put the one first, one times the minus, sorry, 1129.16. Okay, there we have it. Um, next little note, be careful on, Watch the signs, watch the signs. So I'm going to add these up, multiply, add up, get a negative number here, multiply, be careful, negative times negative, that becomes a positive. So once we do our little bit of math, we are going to get a positive 131.38 kilojoules per mole. So let's write that down over here and interpret it. Let's take just a second to interpret it. 131.38 kilojoules per mole. Okay, it's positive. It means non-spontaneous, thermodynamically unfavorable, and it also means that it's reactant favored. So let's put this. I'm going to put non-spawn. That's our my fun little abbreviation for non-spontaneous. And it's reactant favored. And it's all because that is positive, because it's positive. Now, let me show you how to do this just a little bit faster. Once you understand this principle, you can go ahead and skip this part right here. I will give you a word of warning though. If you are doing um, an essay where you have to write this out and it's being graded, you have to show some trail. There has to be some traceability. So make sure you write at least this much. If you just spit out a number right here, your teacher, your professor is not going to give you any credit or the TA that's grading it. They won't give you any credit. You gotta show something. So you don't necessarily have to write this out, but you do need to at least write out these numbers so they can see that you understood the process. Um, so here, here's how I do it a little bit faster. Products minus reactants. Uh, the delta G for the reaction is going to be products. So I've got two moles of my water, which is negative 228.0 plus one mole times negative 394.4 minus, now I'm going to do my reactants, it's going to be one mole times the negative 50.8, that's from the methane, plus two moles, and show this, even though it's zero, show it, so that when it's being graded, the grader knows, oh, they understand that anything that's an element is zero, still write it out because it's showing traceability, you understand the process. Um, two times zero. 
There we go. There we go. And then you just plug all that into your calculator. And our final answer is negative. Um, so delta G for reaction is negative 800 point, sorry, point eight. And that is going to be kilojoules per mole. Okay, it's a negative value, spontaneous, product favored. Okay, um, thermodynamically favorable. All right, there you have it. Um, love these. <laughs> love, love, love these. Um, so in homework, you'll have to look it up on a table, and on a test, you'll either have a snippet of a table, or in the problem, they'll just actually list uh, the values that you need. Just remember, they might not include the element, but you'll know it's zero. Okay, good work. If you have other questions on Gibbs Free Energy, take a look at the Entropy and Free Energy playlist. Thanks. Have a good day.